name's Tony, World's OK Medic, and I'm here to talk about using the pulse ox to measure distal circulation. The pulse ox is an amazing tool if you know its limitations, and this video will cover way you can use it to check distal circulation. My first time using the pulse ox for this purpose was on a 0-2 in the morning call for a lady with right arm pain. It was very vague, it looked very undramatic. I was the assistant medic in this case here. My partner was busy asking questions. And basically we were trying to figure out how to convert a right arm pain into a left arm pain so we had something to work with, you know, thinking heart stuff and everything. I took the pulse ox probe and checked her left hand, which is on the unaffected arm and got a good pulse ox reading, relayed the info to my partner. But while I was playing around, I moved the pulse ox to her right hand and whoa, I did not get a very good pulse reading at all. I checked a couple fingers. The, uh, the little indicator that measures the heartbeat wasn't catching and wasn't matching the palpated pulse of the patient. And the saturation was all over the place. We took her to the hospital and sure enough, she had a brachial artery occlusion. They used a catheter to inject urokinase and dissolve the clot just like that, problem solved. This makes total sense. The pulse ox cannot work without an arterial pulse to capture and register on a plethysmograph and to obtain a saturation from. So go forward a few years, find another lady, and she was complaining of left inguinal burning pain. Same thing. Pulse ox on the right foot was good. Pulse ox on the left foot, crap. Sure enough, she had, I believe it was an iliac artery occlusion. And then flying with Mercier a few years later, got the same thing on another patient, detected an arterial occlusion in the leg, and it was with the pulse ox. So since then, I've used a pulse ox on pretty much any patient where I have suspicions about a distal circulation. I know you're thinking the five P's of arterial, arterial occlusion, but in none of these previous patients was there pallor or pulselessness that we could really be sure of uh, coolness or anything else, it, it was basically just pain and not even pain in the extremity per se. It was like in the inguinal one and the crotch and the other in the arm, it was like just vague. And then the third one, really nothing. So I've used the pulse ox to monitor distal circulation in any patient where I am concerned about a progression of say swelling from compartment syndrome secondary to small penetrating gunshot, stab wound, crush injury, broken bone, envenomation, burn, what have you, I check the pulse ox at the beginning. And if I'm passing that patient off to another unit, I say, hey guys, we got good capture, watch the pulse ox, keep it on that distal extremity, and you'll see in advance if there is a change in circulation to the extremity. So that along with a method of taking a blood pressure with a pulse ox is gonna be covered in the upcoming video. Thank you. Here to talk about pulse oximetry and how it can be used for peripheral circulation checks. As you can see from the waveform here, you have the what's called the plethysmograph, and that's matching my pulse. If I had the EKG matched up here or plugged on, it should match these waves. As you can see on each of the waves, there's a little notch on the down slope. Let this capture again. And that notch is called the dichrotic notch and is basically the uh, aortic valve closure as the heart beats. It's a little back pressure. So, how can this be useful? If I want to check distal circulation, I have to establish my pulse ox capture. It will only work if there is distal circulation. And I'm trying to get this so it holds. I'll edit that if I need to. And so we can experiment with occlusion two different ways. And you see the tourniquet here, I've got a uh, tourniquet applied. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this until I lose arterial circulation to the fingers, which should show up at about two and a half twists if I was on the uh, helio here. And look what happens. My capture goes away. This is a garbage capture. Now you notice it's still reading a number at the end, the 97%. Well, if you don't have a good pleth waveform matching your heart rate, the numeric value that the pulse ox is showing right here is no longer quite uh, valuable. Also, you see a pulse index, the PI right there, 
it's showing a 0.6 which is showing a low accuracy level. Once I take off the uh, tourniquet, this number should go up showing a much better, more reliable pulse. Teachers out there, you might take note that I applied an arterial tourniquet to my arm and my arm isn't falling off nor am I dying nor am I screaming and wailing and gnashing my teeth in pain. By the way, if you're watching this, you've also had a tourniquet on your arm. Uh, if you can't remember when, just think of the last time you had a blood pressure taken. So I'm going to release this now. And let's see what my pulse index does. And see the pulse index drops or increases to 3.6, 4.4. So now that saturation is an accurate one. A couple other things I could do with this, if you see the brachial artery, find the uh, bicep tendon on the inside here and just push in. And this is my, I'm squishing my brachial artery. And you can see that's affecting distal circulation as well. If you're going to use a pulse ox to check distal circulation, it's really important to establish a baseline norm. So for example, say I have an injured or fractured or burned or whatever jacked up left arm. I want to start with the unaffected arm and make sure I have a good pulse ox reading. I should be able to affect, uh, get the same reading both sides. So say I put the pulse ox on this hand and I got a good reading. Now I put it on the suspect arm and the reading is garbage or it's all over the place, I know I have arterial uh, compromise there. This works almost as effectively and accurately as a Doppler does. All right, the last trick on this here is I'm gonna, I can't show it here, but you can do a palpated BP equivalent with a pulse ox. So say I take the BP cuff and I put it on my arm and I inflate the cuff until, just like this did, the waveform goes away. What I now do is just like with a palpated pulse where I'm feeling for the pulse here, I'm going to use a pulse ox probe as my palpator. I'll reduce the pressure in my BP cuff by about 10 millimeters at a time and pause because as you can see it takes a moment for this to capture. And I keep doing that until I see a waveform show up. When the waveform shows back up, that then I will read my manometer and that will be my systolic BP. Now this is something it's kind of gimmicky however I found it useful in people who have had uh, in dialysis patients who have had shunts or where I could not find a radial pulse for other reasons and in one person who was trapped I actually did it on the foot and I could put a cuff on the calf had the pulse ox on the toe got a pulse ox pleth waveform and did a BP off the calf alone to give me an approximated systolic pressure. So, not often used, but definitely something to keep in your, in, in your back pocket if you need to. Alright, thanks for listening. I hope this gave you some ideas.